Now, the European Space Agency's JUICE mission has successfully blasted off, a second time of trying. It's heading to Jupiter to explore its icy moons. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, joins us now from the newsroom. Rebecca, those pictures were fantastic. Didn't happen yesterday, did happen today. Um, there must be a, a lot of people congratulating each other in the, the control room there in Germany. Yeah, that's right. A, a lot of relieved scientists um, who've been working on this for a really long time. And I have to say, after yesterday's last minute scrub, it was a, a chance of lightning near the rocket. Nerves really were jangling today. But to see that rocket go up, to see it blast off, I mean, the pictures are always amazing. But to think about what's on top of it, this little spacecraft, which is going to be heading on an eight-year journey, travelling four billion miles to get to the Jupiter system. I mean, this really is the first step in getting there. But a really really important one and it's good to see it go off in in such style and it all looks to be going well so far with the launch what the mission is all about what does it what's it going to tell us that's useful for us to know well, this is a really big mission for the European Space Agency. So the spacecraft is heading to the Jupiter system. It's going to look at Jupiter, biggest planet in our solar system, but it's also going to be focusing on Jupiter's moons, Ganymede, Callisto and Europa. Now, these moons are spectacular. They're beautiful. but they look quite bleak they sort of look like not much is going on there but scientists think they might be one of the best places to search in our solar system to see for, for life to see whether they could be habitable because they're covered in a thick layer of ice but beneath that ice scientists think there are deep deep liquid salty oceans and they could have the right conditions for life to thrive so this mission isn't going to be searching for life it's not going to be detecting signs of life but it is going to be looking to see if these moons what lies beneath these moons if oceans are there and if the oceans are there what they're like whether they could be habitable whether they've got the potential to host life and that really will be a game changer because until now we've tended to look for places which are going to be friendly for life a bit closer in in the solar system you know these are these are frozen worlds far out they're they're distant but scientists think there's a really good good chance of, of seeing that actually you know life life might be able to exist there um, if we can just go back to the live pictures um, of the uh, of the control room in Germany um, there's a lot of you know hugs going on handshakes going on um, you know we know that there are things that they need to do but the, does that suggest that uh, it's gone well yeah I mean everything looks good so far which is you know which is what you want to see you want to see those happy scientists in in mission control but what's fascinating about this is you know this is science on a slow time scale loads of scientists have been working on this mission for about 15 years to date that's how long it takes to design the spacecraft get it ready get it sort of built design the science so really this is the halfway point because it's going to take from now another eight years to get to Jupiter so you know there's there's it's almost like you've got to sort of sustain your levels of excitement with a mission like this but when it gets there when it gets to the Jupiter system when it starts exploring those moons the pictures it sends back are going to be spectacular but you know this is science that involves different generations of scientists you know it's a multi-generational science mission but a great start today. Oh, Rebecca, Rebecca Morrell thank you so much always good to see happy scientists.